Greetings, guys and girls, and a very warm welcome, watchers. The sun is shining and the magpie is casting. Coming to you right now with a live one versus one battle fresh from the ladder. Featuring this time spawning in the east, it is going to be the Overcommand West forces of Panzer Grenadier and Grufern. And spawning in the west, playing as the Soviet forces, is going to be Hoy's Paul AD, uh, who I'm probably just going to call Paul. The map for this classic brawl is going to be Kolodny Farm, and this is the regular summary Kolodny Farm, so. Uh, Yep, that's going to be the battleground here for these two players. A little bit of a uh, little bit of afternoon casting here, and uh, as they uh, as they get settled in, and I take a sip here on my tea, ah, I'll just uh, just take a little minute here to say, um, yeah, there haven't been many uploads this week. Sorry about that. It's been a busy one for the old magpie here. The magpie's nest has been a flurry of activity, and there's been tons of things that I need to organise and see to. Um, you know, getting towards that time of year when you've got to think about family and Christmas and get everything a little bit organised, which, um, yes, I know, adulting, sometimes I do it. Um, so yeah, that's, um, basically it's just been like a load of other things taking up my time, not to mention the bloody Tom Clancy's The Division, which is just still a fantastic game, just eating into my video, video gaming time. Anyway, um, let's turn our attention back to this game, though, because, uh, we've got a Maxim on the field, so, uh, looks like, uh, Paul here gonna be reaching for, actually, two Maxims, so, uh, Sport Weapon Campanire is gonna be up and running for him, and he's gonna be Maximing out onto the field, maximizing the potential, perhaps, of his Soviet army here. <laughs> oh, Magpie. Oh, you are too funny. Seriously, though, stop. Um, yeah, so, yeah, looks like, uh, it looks like, oh, he's gone ahead and uh, gone for the guard motor coordination tactics, too. So he's going to have the T-3485, he's going to have the 120mm tubes, he's going to have the guards, he's going to have some vehicle repairs, and he's going to be able to mark the vehicles of his opponents. A good commander, this. Very, very potent all-rounder. And, in fact, one of the, one, the, like, one of the commanders, like, one of the starting three that everybody has had since the game first came out, really. Um, this was one of the commanders who was just available, like, on release. Anyway, these Vox Grenadiers are heavily pinned down. They are getting hooned on. They're taking out some uh, engineers at the moment, which I'm um, slightly questionable that uh, Paul is trading those gren those uh, engineers, sorry, but I guess he's going to be okay. More more Vox Grenadiers down here going to be probably shortly suppressed by this Maxim. One of them here getting stuck in the arc, but they're going to keep doing loop-de-loops around this building. Nice double, guess ni nice double bluff here from Paul. He's going to immediately turn the MG to face west here. That should mean that these Vox ought to GTFO. They're just getting shot up. And there comes the prompt fallback here. Panzer Grenadier and Griefen ever... Uh, a competent and uh, quite skillful commander here, so uh, I, it, it would be unlike him to leave those guys to hung out to dry in front of a Maxim for too long. Uh, let's take a look back here. Now, no sign of a Schwebermax Schlepper just yet. We can expect that to be coming onto the field shortly here, and then we'll, then we'll be able to gain some insight into the tech here that Panzer Grenadier and Griefen's going to pick. It feels like it's been a little while, like a month or so, since I've cast a, a game from Panzer Grenadier and Griefen, but he's always one of the more active players on the ladder, always doing stuff, always uh, always showing up, and always uh, always trying hard, always fighting hard, and always just generally being like up there with the top tiers of play, so always a pleasure to watch, always a pleasure to cast. But uh, yeah, be interesting to see exactly what kind of tech decisions he's going to make moving forward. Got some Volks out on the field. Paul here going to come through and try and grab the cutoff, and that will be uh, quite significant. The resource differential between these two players hasn't hasn't really been up to much, but this is definitely going to help. It's going to cut off the fuel here for Panzer Grenadier and Griefen, uh, so that's pretty important. Paul actually hasn't been able to really maintain control of uh, his own fuel, though, so uh, he obviously there's an advantage in cutting off your opponent's fuel, but it's hardly like he's pulling ahead. I mean, he sort of is, but I mean, ten, th sorry, three is the fuel differential right now. Not too big, nothing to write home about. Vox Grenadier is going to come around for a nice flank on this Maxim. A little bit of focus fire could come down to put some damage onto the weapon crew. Some Storm Piners as well, actually, even going to come back. Have these guys been laying mines out over here? No. Hmm. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, nice kind of pseudo surround. Oh, wow, the Maxim decides to focus the Storm Piners first. I do kind of like that. Whoa! Panzer Grenadier and Griefen going to have to get the fall back there, and he does in, in reasonably decent timing. Now there's two Maxims, a hooning. Three Maxims! Oh, God, let's listen to this. Oh my goodness. A rat attack. That is a ton of Maxim just hooning into these Volks Grenadiers. They stayed for as much damage as they could get down, but now they must go. There's also another Maxim over here. And it looks like Paul here, I mean, he's chosen guard motor coordination, but the way he's playing makes it look like he ought to perhaps have chosen partisans because he's kind of doing a little bit of Ivanesque abuse here. This is probably the most Maxims I've seen consecutively for uh, quite a long time now. A real blast from the past, and it's going to be a good test here, Frank Griefen, to see whether he's going to be able to overcome the Maxim spam. Uh, it's not so often that Axis players are called upon to do so these days, but, uh, you know, you can't forget how it's done, because otherwise all it takes is a wee bit of Maxim spam, and you roll over and die, which is terrible. Still no Schwerver Max Schlepper here from Angriefen. Um, unusual, perhaps. Uh, 
I, am I right about this? I, yeah, I'm not missing anything here on the minimap. Okay. I feel like we should have seen a, a Schweber Max Schlepper by now. Um, I guess his fuel income's not been stellar, but I mean, it's always nice to throw down uh, a building so at least you have access to the incendiary grenades, which are, of course, not trivial when your opponent's using a lot of uh, Maxims. Um, what else? I don't know, Battle Gripper HQ, that way it gives you access to the kind of iffy uh, lag gun, but I mean, that is something that you can do, and that doesn't. Th neither of those two things require that much fuel. So, yeah, I would like to see him get a truck. You can see it on the build queue now, but uh, I would like to see him get a truck so that he can have access to the Maxim, have access... Uh, sorry, have access to the um, incendiary grenade for the Maxim, and have access perhaps to the light gun if that's what he wants. Um, Scoreline differential beginning to open up a little bit here. Panzer Grenadier and Griefen kind of push back at the moment. Let's crack the tactical, and you can see what I'm on about. So, li good good amount of map control here, and Paul here is just going to be pressuring into this uh, cutoff point here. Uh, looks like some Storm Pinders in the south will grab a VP, and that's going to help control the bleed right now for uh, Angriefen, who's just beginning to fall. I mean, there's about a 60-point difference, now 61. Beginning to open up between these two players. Dear God, these Maxims are just getting so, so oppressive, aren't they? Oh, my God. I, I hate... I still hate playing against Maxims. Now we've got guards coming in. Two command points has been reached, which means that Paul can now start calling in guards. 338 manpower uh, per squad, but of course they are fearsome. The six-man squads, pretty good, uh, pretty good stats on those squads, pretty good weapon upgrades, and he's getting those DPLMGs in here straight away. So those guards going to be uh, the kingmaker on the field, pretty much. They are going to be the most devastating squad out there, and if he uh, if he calls in a mortar tube next, then I would love his position, because the mortar tube means that the ring of maxims uh, can defend it, and just, it, you know, the mortar tube can just sit pretty and hoon fire pretty much onto your opponent's doorstep, given this kind of a setup. So I'd quite like to see Paul go for the 120 mil tube here. That would make me happy. A couple of Storm Pioneers trying for a run by here, but they immediately get spotted. Maxim in the hood, so they're not going to have much luck. Looks like some shoe mines were attempted to be placed here, but uh, that's been interrupted. Uh, probably we should see the cancel on that here. Um because I don't think they're going to finish finish that. Volk's going to do is get mowed down. And I feel like I should... Uh, can I can I bring up some uh, uh, player stats here? Here we go. Damage dealt. Wow, there we go. Look at that damage dealt differential. So Hoy, Paul, AD, up at 2,800, near enough 3k. Storm Prans are going to Darren Griffin. You know, he's lost, he's lost 21 men for killing just 8. These Maxims undoubtedly have been ruthlessly efficient. And there is a Storm Pioneer squad here in jeopardy. Okay, he's going to get out of there. The Maxim just not quite facing the right way at the right time here. Volks Grenadiers, credit where credit's due. Panzer Grenadier and Griefen is getting some work done up here in the north. But uh, <clears throat> the main story here is definitely domination so far from Paul. Now, you know, Company of Heroes 2 is a game of swings. Earn roundabouts, as they say. And to be fair, Panzer Grenadier and Griefen does have... Oh, and Griefen, sorry. Does have two uh, victory points captured. Uh, so, you know, the scoreline differential is not actually as terrible as you might think. And uh, over command players... Wow, looks like he's going to go for Luftwaffe ground, uh, Luftwaffe ground Forces Doctrine here. Um, so here come the Faustromjäger, uh, although they were kind of fail from Jäger because they just came out the building and failed hard into a max in there. And this is what happens sometimes when you deploy those fail from Jägers into the fog of war. Uh-oh, potential squad wipe coming down here. A lot of squads in position. Maxim Art correctly set up. Engineers with rifles here. So this Volksgrenadier is definitely on for being squad wiped here. It just depends how the dice roll out for Paul. And it looks like the Volk Grenadier, he is actually going to get out of there. So a nice pickup for Angreifen. Definitely uh, a little bit more wind in his sails there. A little bit more wind in his sails uh, through a lack of Volks Grenadier fails. Always going to stand you in good stead as a uh, as an overcommand player. But yeah, I think as Axis players, you know, everybody's had those games where you play as Axis and you just get absolutely rinsed in the early game. And I think we're kind of seeing that right now. Like it's not been super, super duper one-sided, but it's been pretty rough here for Angreifen. He's got a lot of work to do as I take a sip here on my tea. Hmm. Oh, ah, that is a cracking brew. Now, looks like we've got some skirmishing down here in the south. Another Maxim. Going to be set up, going to be hooning. Whoa, my goodness, I didn't see how low those Falschermjägers were. Jeez, they got cut down to size. That Maxim's got some lovely veterancy from hosing them down. Remember, Falschermjägers, as far as I know, the most expensive infantry in the game. So uh, plenty of veterancy to be had by shooting at them. Volks Grenadier is going to take a fight in north here, seeing off some engineers. They need to scatter before this Maxim rolls into town, though, or else things are going to get angry. Uh, sorry, things are going to get messy. Uh, yeah, they are going to split here. Meanwhile, fight here at Angreifen's cutoff point. 
Uh, we got lots of guards in the hood. Maxim gets forced back, actually, just through weight of fire from Storm Pioneers and Volks. That's very nice, but there's still a Maxim in the church, so I imagine that one ought to go the way of the Soviets. Incendiary Grenade going to come through here, and a fallback is forced, so Paul gives up pretty much a lot of his control in north, actually. There's still a Maxim here, but these Volks, if they're crafty, can skim around the edge of its range and grab a couple more points, including notably a fuel point. So, and Gryphon going to try and get something done there, but damn, I really feel for him. He's just getting pinged back, and here comes the 120 mil too. Better late than never. I mean, it's up to you whether you think this is late or not. I personally think he could have used one a bit earlier. Uh, but, uh, you know, actually, by going for the... I see, by going for the mortar tube at this timing, this is the timing when I'd normally be, like, expecting Soviet players to be adding Zis guns to their roster. And there is a Panzer II Lukes on the queue, which BT dubs the tech choice was mechanized reg. Sorry, I never commented on that, but it's been there on the minimap for the keener eyed viewers. Um... Yeah, so, okay, so Panzer II Lux is going to be on the field here, and that actually makes, that's a lot of change. Uh, that, that Panzer II Lux is effective against all of the units that you see up here in the top right. Of course, the guards, if they do manage to take a good engage, possibly from some good cover. Oh! Oh! I thought that could have been a squad wipe. It was close. It was close. Anytime the 120 mil is firing at squads that small, you just have to, you, you know, ugh, ugh, just make, make, makes their... Makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck, you know, immediately I start pressing fallback on my entire army and stuff. Just kidding, but seriously. Um, so anyway, here comes that Panzer II Lux, yeah. So as I was saying, the guards, if they take a good fight, like in buildings or in decent cover, they will be able to ping this little tank back. But, uh, you know, the DPS on this little tank is real, so, you know, you ought to... I, I imagine we're going to see it dominating the field, and yeah, immediately the guards are going to have to give away good Volksgrenadier support in situ here for uh, Panzer Grenadier and Griefen, and it looks like, indeed, two squads of guards falling back, and with both of them falling back, that actually means that this Lukes is completely the kingmaker right now, so wherever this Lukes goes, destruction and death will follow for the Soviet forces. Bang, 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 get out of my church, bang, 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 yeah! Uh, he's gonna try and uh, gonna try and take this one out. 120 mil t casts a shell in. Unlikely it's gonna hit the Lukes. Boom! No, Lukes is just gonna stay mobile here. Additional Soviet units up in the north. Looks uh, looks like uh, Paul here wants to get his backfield back in order. Gonna grab his fuel. Gonna grab some other points. Gonna hopefully get back on the VP here shortly. And Gryphon though being active all over the map. And I have to say, you know, for a game this has been a rough old 10 or 12 minutes for him so far. But he's actually looking fine, and he hasn't dropped any squads. Um, a little bit of luck helping him out on that, but, you know, I say it's like 90 skill, 10 luck on the fact that he hasn't, like, dropped any squads. And his army here in the top left looking quite good, so as long as nothing too disastrous happens in the next couple of minutes, I think he's actually setting himself up for a rather sweet mid and possibly late game here. Um, T-70, by the way, on the field for the Soviet forces now, so that will answer this loop in a straight-up fight. Of course, there's a lot more that comes to play in a fight like that. And remember, we do have Fauschermiegers on the field, um, which, uh, actually, you know what? It's totally not so relevant that they have Panzerfausts anymore. It used to be that they were, like, a rare Panzerfausting unit for the OKW, but of course they're not anymore, because Volksgrenadiers have them, so... Yup, good old Magpie, always knows what he's on about, lol. Um, but seriously, um... Massive amount of Soviet units here in mid. This T-70 bizarrely idle at the moment. I'd love to see it range forward and try and find a T-70, or at least try and find some trouble. I mean, there could be mines out and about, but really, I mean, Panzergrenadier and Gryphon has got better things to be spending his muni on. Actually, having said that, actually, he's stacking up a ton of muni here, so... Not buying STGs. Not buying Shreks. Not buying any upgrades, actually. It's very interesting. This is a harder map for STGs to flourish on, so perhaps... Perhaps he's just deciding not for him on this map. Anyway, Luke's here is just going to continue strafing the lines. Got some Volksgrenadiers backing it up. Meanwhile, in the south, looks like Angreifen is being quite active, pushing up, grabbing a couple of points here. There is a Soviet Maxim in the hood, but I think this is going to be a prompt in Sandry to uh, cause a fallback. Yeah, here we go. Wee donk. Oh, 120 mil going to chalk in for round. And indeed, actually, the Maxim going to dodge that first in Sandry. So still very much alive, this Maxim, and uh, marshalling the south of the map nicely. Looks like the Lukes is going to reposition, perhaps, to try and deal with it. Uh-oh, Lukes here getting a little bit cornered. That's four PTRSs, and not to mention the T-70. Mark Vehicle comes down, and that really should be the end of the Panzer II here, and that is a big shame for Angreifen, just caught out of position for an instant, and Paul pouncing, and, uh, you know, translates that uh, out of position into a full-on unit wipe there, and now, I mean, it's 56 supply of Soviets against 30 of OKW. The army here of Angreifen getting battered. He has no fuel in the tank right now, although his income is reasonable. Going to be grabbing a Rakettenwerfer here to try and help out with the T-70. Did he just lose a Volk squad? No, they did fall back. Okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but if I crack the tack, you can see the story here. Massive Soviet map control and uh, an advancing po uh, Hoi Paul here um, is, is bad times for Angreifen. Paul here masterfully using the Soviet forces so far. I think he got a bit lucky with the skipping on Zis guns, but I mean, I guess his uh, field control and control of the cutoff had been such that Angreifen didn't really have the fuel to exploit that lack of anti-tank. 
guess I just have a sip on my tea. Ah, oh, oh, dearie me. Oh, it is a cold one here, by the way. I'm uh, sat here in Bristol, England. The sun is just now gracefully reaching the horizon and uh, creating quite the spectacle out there. All of the rooftops, I've got a reasonable view from my flat here, all of the rooftops have a, a lovely dusting of frost on them, looking quite wintry out there, and uh, that is nice actually, because I've not really experienced a proper English winter for some two, three years now, and I do miss it, I miss it, it like, it's a nice adventure, every time I go out the door I have to like put my hat and my scarf and my gloves on, and like, you know, when you're outside it's like, okay, okay, let's not be out here that fast, you know, everyone's got a spring in their step, because it's, you know, pretty, can freeze out there, um, and when you get indoors, it's like, oh, there's a heater. You know, it's just like, you know, mission achieved. You get a little, like, I don't know. It, it's really little things, but I actually do enjoy it. And to be honest, if you're not taking joy from the little things in life, you're doing it wrong. Magpie's top tip for the day. Anyway, let's focus. Let's bring it back on in here. Let's uh, refocus on this uh, RTS, which is, of course, the reason why we're all here. Um, so it looks like a... Uh, let's just check the tech here for the Soviet player. So he has... Tank of E Battalion Command, no sign of the Mech Reg yet. Interesting, because I think a T-3485 is pretty much game here right now, and he has the... well, he has to build the building, but by the time the building's built, he'll have the money more or less for that. So I'd quite like to see him reach for the top tier of Soviet tech here. Um, you know, I think T-3485 wins the game. I think uh, Katusha certainly goes a long way towards winning the game and probably demoralizes your opponent out of the game, if nothing else. T-70 here, almost certainly going to get a squad wipe here. This Volks Grenadier is never going to be able to evade these, uh, these these shells for long. Actually, chasing really deep is this uh, T-70. Takes a Panzer Faust. How is this Volks Grenadier still alive? Please die, sir. Thank you. Jeez, that Volks Grenadier just, like, absolutely rinsing the RNG there. Um, staying alive for, for ages. This T-70, it, its engine is broken. I think... A, a, mm, I think that is Faustable. Like, I think a Faust will kill that. So these Volks are just sort of waiting in the wings. Okay, the Faust is ready now. Rakettenwerfer, amazingly, is probably going to miss this retreating T-70. I'm, I guess he had to respect the Max and respect the guards here. Here comes the Faust, and now we'll see. Yep, T-70 goes down, so something at least there for Engreifen. But he's still struggling down at 38, 39, 38 supply under, like, a good old 55 here. Is that the sound of shock troops? No, it's the sound of Faustrum Yeagers. Now, the Faustrum Yeagers have got a star, but is that when they get invisibility? Okay, they got Frangy Smoke, and then they get invisibility when they are... That too, okay. But yeah, these, um, if, as long as you keep vetting them up, uh-oh, 120 more mortar round, I'm calling it. Is it going to wipe them? Oh, it was close. I just, I had, I had the mortar sense there. I had the mortar sense. Um, yeah, that looked like a prime opportunity for a ludicrously expensive and possible Hail Mary squad for the Axis player to get wiped by, uh, by 120 mil tube there. But, uh, it looks like it didn't translate. Nicely done for Panzer Grenadier and Greifen. I've got to say, I would be a bit sad. He's going to call in another squad of them, actually. Coming out very nicely, and he gets a Maxim. If he can loot this, things actually start looking gravy. And the reason that's so cool... Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I love it when you manage to loot a Maxim with Faustrum Jaegers or Storm Pioneers. Because you actually get the point, you know, you get the point defense of those guns, you know. So these guys have got FG-42s. Like, the DPS of this little squad here is insane. Uh, so he's going to fall it back. I do hope he manages to extract it safely. The other Faustrum Jäger did get out of that sticky scenario. It looks like a squad of Storm Pine is heading out into the south right now for Angreifen. But uh, yeah, the, v the VP situation is going to start getting out of hand if Paul can actually just hold on to these VPs. I have to say, Angreifen playing from behind here, doing a masterful job. You know, we're 18 minutes into the game, and I would say that the Soviet player has held, whoops, has held the middle line of the map for, you know, at least half. It's got to be... It's got to be like 75% of that. But Angreifen's been able to hold on to at least one VP this whole time. So, you know, th th there's only 12 tickets separating these two players, which if you would look at the game and how it's gone so far, you know, I would absolutely expect there to be at least 100 tickets between these two players. Uh, but that's not been the case at all. So credit to Angreifen here. He's going uh, to be lengthening this game out here and uh, staying in for all he's worth as I take a sip on my tea. Mmm. Oh, that agrees with me. Um, <clears throat> okay, so Guard's going to grab the cutoff. This is annoying because the fuel point is presently in Axis hands, the southern fuel point. So that is fuel that is being denied. Oh my god, Angreifen is making do with like bare minimum income here. Is he ever going to be able to afford a real tank this game? I mean, I, I, I love I love a Panzer II Lu Lukes as much as the next man, but a real tank, it ain't. So, um, 
I would love for him to be able to afford like something like I think a Yagdi is a safe choice here moving forwards because he I think we have to I think if you're in growth in here you have to accept the fact that you have been behind on income and you're probably going to be behind on income uh oh infantry oh no some fashion yoga there just getting picked down I didn't actually see it happen but that was definitely a fashion yoga squad that was lost I think it was on the screen actually I think it may have been even here but I was just looking somewhere else anyway fashion yoga squad gets lost but it was the novice fashion yoga squad the more elite squad here uh, still on two stars of veterancy, going to keep on going. And if you can keep betting them up, they do get sinister. Like, they're a bit like Overcomar, uh, Oversoldaten, sorry. They they do get a bit sinister. Actually, the uh, 120 mil here attracting a little bit of fire. Volks Grenadier is just going to push that one away. I'd love it if they chased just, uh, like, just a bit further. Um, but I suppose there is a Maxim in, in the Instaskirka. Nine. Nine. Maxim Instaskirka. Uh, so there's a Maxim in the church is what I'm getting at. Um... And uh, that is problems right now for Angryphon, who's grabbing his opponent's fuel point. My god, this man's nothing if not very tenacious. Absolutely. I often wonder, because I have to say, Angryphon's one of these players who I've cast in probably like the most grueling of games. Here comes that T3485. Uh, the most grueling of games. Looks like Angryphon might just be trying to go for a KT or something. He's definitely getting another truck. Uh, but he never seems to get phased. Like, he's just absolutely okay with playing these horribly grindy games. Now, these Volks here are taking an absolute pounding. Oh, they need to fall back. They need to hop the fence and then fall back. Because if they fall back from here, they're just going to freaking die. They get an incendiary into the building. They need to hop the fence and then fall back. Hop the fence. No, they fall back first. This is risk now. Uh, are they going to get wiped? I mean, this is like two lots of geezers with DPs plus a maxim. Uh, 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 okay, that vault does escape. Jeez, that was close. Man. You see, when you fall back from here, like, when units falling back can't climb fences, obviously, so it's much better just to climb the fence and then fall back. Like, that is a safe fallback. Uh, wow, these Volks actually even get up to three star now. This is crazy. Um, sometimes over command, you can be having a terrible game, but if you don't get squad wiped that much, you can actually just sort of come back into it through veterancy. I find particularly against UKF this can be a thing. But anyway, here comes the T-3485, comes straight into the arc of the Rakettenwerfer, but the Rakettenwerfer was repositioning. So it gets caught undeployed and immediately forced to fall back. That was massive, actually. That was huge. Imagine if this was deployed. That would have been a dink into the bonnet of that uh, T-3485, possibly two rounds. And then the T-3485 has to be cautious. As it is on full health, pursuing its only anti-tank threat here, this is a completely different game now. Uh, and Greif in there getting a bit unlucky. Paul there getting very lucky, but capitalizing nicely. Looks like some Volksgrenadier is going to meet the T-34 here. Looking for a, a double Fausting, perhaps, something like that. He has to be careful with his munitions here, though, the Zangreifen. He's only got, like, 82, so I'm going to have a sip on my tea. <sighs> oh, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, I think my appreciation for tea, like, correlates inversely to the outdoor temperature, as in the colder it is, the more I like my tea. <laughs> Um, although I do always like my tea, even if it's like tropical, so. Anyway. Um, T-34 here is going to catch the Storm Pioneers, another expensive squad. Prompt fallback there for Angryphon. Top awareness there, that was nice, very nice. Uh, the score gap is still just six tickets. Okay, now seven, like, I mean, just how is he keeping it this close? Angryphon here fighting from behind like a champ. Uh, he does have his um, extra truck, no sign of the Schwer, uh, Schwer Panzer HQ yet. But you have to imagine that that's going to be coming along here at some point in the very near future. My god, this T-3485 is it's just probably... Is it going to run over a load of geezers here? Oh my god, actually, the uh, Rakettenwerf is back in the hood. Does get a nice shot in here. Now we could see a Faust come down off these uh, Faust from Jaegers. Maybe not. Okay, Faust comes down off of the uh, off of the um, uh, Volksgrenadiers. My god, this Maxim off. Oh, he needs to fall back. I don't like... Oh, he's going to trade the Maxim here. He is going to trade that Maxim. There's no way that one's getting out there. Uh, it looks like the AT gun has moved up here now. And it's going to continue piling damage, hopefully, onto the T-34. No, the T-34 manages to hide behind this building. That is nice here. Uh, how is these, How are these Volksgrenadiers, who, by the way, now have um, STGs? They are just taking these fights here. Four-star Volksgrenadiers rinsing these guards. So much damage. I thought for sure that Soviet army was not going to get routed by this ragtag Axis blob here. How is Angryphon making these things happen? A lot of the, well, quite a few Soviet units right now are either back at base reinforcing or on their way back there. So Angryphon here with a tiny window. Ah, oh, he, he needs to get these Volks out, and he does. My god, that everything's so sketchy right now for Angryphon. He's juggling about 12 plates, and they're all made of, like, finest crystal or something. This is looking to be, like, at any second something calamitous could go down, but he's somehow saving it. Wow, we're going to see a half-track, actually. 
from uh, Paul. And we'll have to see what the plan is going to be for this. I have to say I'm a little con confused. New squad of uh, Storm, uh, sorry, Falschermjäger going to come on out of a building here. Probably looking for the um, looking for the medium tank. Yeah, and the AT gun is on the stalk here. So I do like this a lot here. Uh, uh, and it looks like Angreifen with a second um, a second Raketenwerfer is going to get the kill on the Soviet medium. We look at the scoreline, he's only behind by like 15 odd tickers. Um, so despite the fact that map control and the resource situation is terrible, and despite the fact that he still trails in army size, he's had good unit put preservation. I don't mind his army. I'd love it if he could get some indirect fire in there somehow, but I mean, you know, beggars cannot be choosers. Uh, and he's actually looking so okay. I think Paul here has to be pretty careful. This game is much more even now than it has been for a long time with the demise of that T-34. Now he can just get another one reasonably soon actually, that is a thing, so worth bearing in mind. Um, but yeah, and Greifen, oh, he's probably going to lose this Ketsky here I think. This uh, Raket and Squirfer here is going to get taken. Uh, why does he not fall it back? So brave, so brave. I for sure would have fallen that back like ages ago. Ah, oh, he even gets a hit on the real armor. By the way, quad mount has come down and there is, yeah, gratuitous amounts of suppression and DPS flailing out of that unit all over the Axis player. Uh, 120 mil tube here going to be used to capture some points in the south of the map and why not? Um, there is just two Storm Pioneers in the hood here. One of whom actually has the detector out, so he's going to want to put that away if they're going to try and assault this uh, six-man mortar two team here as I have a sip on my tea. I didn't know that this had a flare ability. Huh, that's cool. I mean, 40 munitions sounds like a lot to pay for a flare. That seems like a lot to pay for a flare, but still. Here comes the half-track, and uh, it's going to be playing for a squad wipe here. Remember, at point blank, this thing does have brutal damage, and its speed does allow it to keep pace with retreating infantry squads, making it one of the premium uh, squad wiping squads in the game. Plus, there's a Maxim set up here. Oh, no, changing the arc there. Uh, I think you probably want to late... Oh, well, you know what? I think the, the quad mount's got this guy, and he goes down. So with the quad mount down, there actually, another some Fauschermiegers have also been lost. I was not paying attention to wherever they've gone down. Uh, means that Angreifen's army now looks kind of tiny, and that is big-time problems, actually. Compare it to this army in the top right, which is almost double the size, well, exactly double the size right now. No, way more than double the size, because the T-34 just arrived. And this really ought to be a dead Angreifen. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. PGA, you really ought to be dead in this game. Uh, this is just too much Soviets for your like puny uh, OKW force here, and this is often the way with OKW. Um, if you can keep your squads alive, you normally have a you know a pretty good hope. But as soon as you like start hemorrhaging your core squads when you're behind in a game, uh, you just die. And I, I believe that that's what we're going to see here. 26 minutes in now, triple cap established here for Paul. The scoreline differential opening up to about 100 nearly. Uh, we're on about 90 right now, but it, you know it'll be 100 in just a just a second here. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I reckon this one ought to be over. Um, a Puma is going to be the choice here for Frank Gryphon. That makes a lot of sense. He's obviously heard the T-34 out there, and this Puma is a response to that. I do like a Puma. I like a Puma very much. They're one of my favorite units in the game. Oh, he's going to change it for a Panzer II Lux. Really? How does this make any sense? I just don't understand how the Lux is anything like a good unit right now. The Lux just dies to everything. What, what does the Lukes actually beat here? Like, it beats the four Maxims, which, incidentally, ugh, there's still, like, four Maxims. Gross. Uh, that was the Fauschermjägers going down there. So, now there are no Fauschermjägers, and this game is as good as over. Panzer Grenadier and Gryphon knows it, and he's going to leave this game. Wow. I feel for him there, because I feel like that was, like, a good 20-plus minutes of him fighting a very good game from a behind position. Uh, the quad maxim opening there is still very effective. I think against I mean, Vermacht clearly have an easier time against this, don't they? O OKW have a long history of having a hard time against uh, MG teams, particularly spamming MG teams. Um, and they've got more tools than ever before to deal with it, but it's still not easy. Like, the lag is still iffy. Incendiary grenades are still, like, you know, uh, conditional. Like, you have to get close, and, you know, you have to have the Vox Grenadiers in the right position at the right time. I mean, it's all doable. The tools are all there. I just still feel like OKW have a harder time than most nations against um, early LMGs, and particularly numerous early LMGs, particularly on maps where there's a lot of uh, buildings to put them in. That's the main problem. It's, like, garrisoned units that... That is the main problem. Anyway, 
that's massive. Um, I've you know actually for those of you who've been looking, have a look at the um the public test um the public test mod for the uh, upcoming changes as proposed by uh you know Mirage Fla, GG the Machine, and all those other excellent fine individuals because um some of the changes that they're looking at do give OKW a couple more anti garrison options. Um, things like buffing the anti garrison damage on the flak half track, for example, uh, and a few other changes. Very clever stuff from the from that team, and I very much look forward to seeing some of those changes implemented in the main game. Um, but yeah, to recap, to recap uh, in closing, I think Paul here playing just a fantastic, just such a well-measured, well-controlled textbook Kolodny Farm Soviet game here with guard motor coordination tactics. Very nicely done. A smooth operation there from start to finish. And Gryphon, well, I mean, he was, he, he was, it was like 60-40 that whole game where he was the 40 and he was just kind of behind. And then there, there was a moment where I thought he may have finally like had the resilience to build up enough might for a counter push but uh right about then he suddenly hemorrhaged a couple of squads and uh that was that and he's out of this game but a good game from both these two players here and i would definitely cast again um any game between these two guys so uh, anyway yeah i guess that concludes this video thank you very much for watching probably more casts coming up uh maybe tomorrow and as the weekend ticks over but for now this is magpie 842 signing out <laughs>